Welcome back to Rhododendron Week at the National Botanic Gardens Kilmacurra. And after yesterday's introduction, my plan today is I'm going to take you on a very short tour and take you through some of my favourite rhododendrons here in the gardens at Kilmacurra. So for many people, rhododendrons are medium-sized bushes, but this really is a very good example of what a rhododendron can do in the Himalaya. This is Rhododendron Grande, and it has a great history. So on the 22nd of April, 1850, several packs of seed arrived into Glasnevin. They'd been sent from the Royal Botanic Gardens queue, but they had received them from the Sikkim Himalaya. And Sikkim at the time was an independent kingdom. So the seeds were raised by Dr. David Moore, our curator at the time, and Glasnevin, of course, lies on alkaline, limey soil. It really didn't suit for these rhododendrons. So they, they were sent down here in 1862, having been grown beneath glass at, at Glasnevin. And what is amazing to realise about this tree behind me, not just that it's the largest specimen of its kind in Europe, but when it was planted here in 1862, its sister seedlings were being grown by people like Charles Darwin and Florence Nightingale. And as Matthew said earlier, it was this consignment of seedlings that was to establish what was to become the largest collection of Himalayan rhododendron species in Europe. If you tune into my talk on Friday, I'm going to take you into the interior valleys of Sikkim. And there, in the really deep, sheltered valleys within the shadow of Kachinjunga, you see that they reach great dimensions, particularly with the effects of the Indian monsoon. And I will be covering this, and I will be covering many, many, many more species. So my next rhododendron is a Glasnevin hybrid. So over my head is this spectacular rhododendron Thomas Acton. It's this great avalanche of cascading white blossoms. Um, and this rhododendron was bred at Glasnevin by Dr. David Moore. And in 1860, he crossed two of Joseph Hooker's Himalayan collections. So Rhododendron Campanulatum, which is a low growing bush, with Rhododendron Arboreum, which forms uh, a very tree-like rhododendron. And it is intermediate between the two. And you, if you turn the leaf, you can see that it has that sort of buff brown ingimentum, this sort of soft, spongy, matte-like surface on the underside of the leaf. And then if you look into the flower, it's got the spotting of Rhododendron arboreum. So it was a, a white flowered form of Rhododendron arboreum subspecies Cinnamomium. So bred, as I said, in 1860, seedlings were sent down here to Thomas Acton. And in 1880, uh, Frederick Moore, who had just succeeded his father as curator at, at Glasnevin, he named it in 1880 um, Rhododendron Thomas Acton after the owner of the estate at that time. So to fast forward, um, it was lost in the collections for decades and decades and decades and was long assumed to have become extinct until a couple of years ago we did have our uh, suspicions about this plant and I sent it to an expert at Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh who confirmed that it was indeed the long lost rhododendron Thomas Acton. While Sir Frederick Moore is noted for his work with orchids and he did actually gather at one point the largest collection of orchid species in the world at Glasnevin, he was a noted rhododendron expert in his time, certainly one of the world's leading experts on, on the genus at the time. He was a founding member also of the Rhododendron uh, Society, which later morphed into the Rhododendron Association, which of course today is the Royal Horticultural Society's Rhododendron Camellia Magnolia group, uh, who we're collaborating um, with, with today. So of course, we've come full circle because one of my roles is the Irish branch chair of the Royal Horticultural Society's Rhododendron Camellia Magnolia Group. So we're in the Himalayan Garden here at Kilmacurra and that's why we've got these prayer flags. They're Buddhist prayer flags that we brought from our travels in the Himalaya. And I'm finishing my tour today with you of rhododendrons at Kilmacurra and I'm going to talk to you for a little bit about a Himalayan, an early rhododendron arboreum hybrid that's named after a very famous English house. So my last choice of rhododendron today is rhododendron alticlarense, the high clear rhododendron. 
It was bred in 1826 at Highclere in England and for any of you who watch Downton Abbey, Highclere is the big house that represents Downton Abbey in, in the so soap opera. It's a rhododendron arboreum hybrid crossed with uh, rhododendron ponticum. Sometimes when you cross two species you get a genetic phenomenon called heterosis or hybrid vigour. As you can see from the specimens behind me, it's absolutely true in this case. They're great whacking specimens of about 70 feet tall. Much easier to grow than rhododendron or arboreum. And they were planted along this walk in uh, about 1870. Janet Acton, who gardened here with her brother Thomas, uh, loved it so much that she layered it and repeated it along the length of the broad walk. And we're standing on Kilmacar's famous Victorian Broadwalk and this Broadwalk as I say was laid out in the mid-Victorian period and in the era before television and before radio uh, people uh, spent their Sunday afternoons in these big houses and this walk is wide enough that two Victorian ladies with their wide flowing crinoline dresses were able to walk back and forth along this walk without bumping into one another. And again, in pandemic times, it's very appropriate because it means that in modern days, two people can very easily walk along here, social distancing at, at two metres. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's look at rhododendrons at Kilmacara, and I hope it sets the tone for what's to follow for the rest of the week.